One of the biggest strengths of After Effects is its ability to do real-time previews of your compositions. However, as you begin to add multiple effects to the stack, or you begin to use 3D elements such as cameras and lights, you end up spending a lot of quality time with that dreaded spinning beach ball. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at some techniques that you can use to improve your rendering performance so that you spend a lot more time compositing and less time waiting. Let's get to it. There are a number of different ways that you can set up the preview windows rendering performance in After Effects. One of the first ones that you can look at is actually the quality of the rendering window itself. Come down to this drop down here, you'll see you have a number of different options. Full, which would be perfect fidelity. Everything is, is going to be rendered perfectly. All the effects, all the properties, all the compositing is going to take place. Uh, if we go to half, that bumps down the quality a little bit. And you can start to see things become a little bit more pixelated. We'll go down even further, move this down into a third. Again, more pixelated. You can see, you really see around this eye that you start to get some pixelation, big pixels. And we'll go down to quarters. Sometimes this is necessary when you've got really intensive setups. Lots of layers, lots of compositing, lots of effects that are going on. The next thing that you probably want to look at is what's called soloing. So soloing allows us to isolate a, an individual layer and make sure that only that layer is pushed into the After Effects rendering pipeline. So in this case, this layer right here is the only thing that's being rendered out to the preview window. So that'll improve performance significantly. Now you can solo more than one layer at the same time. So if I come down here and choose another layer, you'll see that now I have two layers that are being rendered into the pipeline. Still not all three or four layers that I've got here in this composition, just the two of them. The next thing to look at is something that's called the region of interest. You can actually isolate an area of the screen so that only those pixels are, are rendered into the pipeline. So I want to see all of my layers, but only in a specific area. So you come over to the region of interest toggle button and we'll click that on and that'll give us this crosshair. And now we just go ahead and select a region of interest. And now only that area will be rendered out. So all of this, all this black is not being rendered. Those pixels are not being rendered. I can obviously modify this by grabbing any of the handles and adjusting the size. I can get over the edge of this, get my cursor there and move the position, adjust the position wherever I'd like it to be. Or if I wanted to start over, I could go ahead and come back to the region of interest toggle, hold the option key down. I'll push it again and that's going to take it back out and I can go ahead and select an area. Probably the final area that you want to take a look at is when you're doing RAM previews. RAM previews can be very intensive. You want to look at as much footage as you possibly can often. But uh, the more layers, the more effects you've got on, the, the shorter the duration becomes and the harder your machine works. So we can do some things about uh, RAM preview performance by coming up to the preview window here and taking a look at this dialog here. Now we've got a combo box here that basically gives us a couple of different configurations. The RAM, normal RAM preview options. This is what would uh, be affected if you just push the preview button or what's called the shift RAM preview options. If I hold the shift key down and push the preview button, uh, there's a different configuration that can be run for RAM preview. So I'm going to go ahead and set up both of these. So we've got a RAM preview option set up. We've got frame rate, resolution. Again, I can set the resolution just like we did down here in, the, in this box right here. We had full half third. That affects the timeline when I'm dragging the, the CTI, current time indicator. This will affect what the, what the resolution, the fidelity, the quality uh, in the RAM preview. So I can set that up to whatever I'd like it to be, auto, half, full. I can set up to render from the very beginning of the comp or render from the current time. And what that means is that where this current time indicator is, is where the RAM preview will begin. So I've got that checked. I can set it up to full screen, uh, rarely use that option. Now, one of the other things you can do is come in and set up your shift RAM preview options. And if you pop into these, probably the most important thing here is usually I leave everything the same, but then I've got it set up so that it renders every other frame. So I'm gonna skip a frame here in between the frames that are rendered. So what that'll do is just fewer frames have to be pushed through the rendering pipeline that'll increase uh, your performance. So let's go ahead and configure that, play around with some of your options. We'll take a quick look and see how that affects the performance here. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my keyboard shortcuts. And the keyboard shortcut is normally the numeric keypad zero for RAM preview. I'm gonna go ahead because I'm on a MacBook Pro and there is no numeric keyboard. Uh, you'll notice that the numeric keyboard numbers are annotated on the MacBook Pro keyboard itself. So in a certain area, you'll start to see these little numbers annotated below. What you need to do to access those is actually push the function key, and then I'll use that zero, numeric keyboard zero, to be able to, to go into the RAM preview. And you can see by watching this green line that it's trying to render out every frame into RAM. 
and I'll go ahead and push the space bar here. Okay, so let's uh, let's check out the performance. You notice how long that took, how much stress it put on the system. I'm gonna go hold down the, the function key, the shift key, and zero on the numeric keyboard. And now what you notice is these little green uh, dots that represent the frames that are being rendered into the pipeline. They're, every other frame is being pushed in. So now when I push down the space key here, every other frame is being rendered. The audio still rendered for us perfectly, so we don't have to worry about that. But you notice how much faster that was and how much that can improve your performance. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in other tutorials on After Effects, I've got a neat one on creating animated text on a path over on my site. Check it out.